Hi, I'm going to do a little introduction to vegetative propagation. Um, so, and then we'll go on to stems today. So, vegetative propagation is propagating plants so that they're clones. It's every part of the plant apart from the flower or seed. So it can be stem, root, leaf bud, leaf, uh, cuttings. So um, that's those are the parts of the plant that are classed as vegetative. Everything but the flower and seed. The advantages of vegetative propagation is there's no variation. What we get, our clone, is going to be exactly the same as the parent, so it's very reliable. Also, um, some plants can't be propagated by seed. You know, vegetative propagation may be the only method. Um, some methods of propagation, vegetative propagation, are very easy, such as dividing plants. You only need to replant them outside. You don't need any special equipment. Um, and there's no problem with knowing what the seed dormancy is, for example, which is sort of, yeah, you might not know um, why your seed isn't germinating. Um, limitations may be you have to make sure that your plant material is pests and disease free. Um, quite often there'll be something like aphids on it, which if you take a cutting of that, they're going to be on your cutting. Um, other disadvantages are you may need specialised equipment. Um, grafting, for example, we don't cover that in the syllabus, but that's very skilled and you need special equipment. Um, and other disadvantages are you're not going to get that many cuttings from one plant, whereas with seeds, you know, you can get a lot of a lot of plants from a, a collection of seed. So look at the table, look at the advantages and disadvantages, seed versus vegetative propagation. Let's have a look at the equipment for vegetative propagation. So that's all we're talking about now. So, <clears throat> OK. Our potting mixture, yeah, sorry I've got my head cut off here, but it's the only way you can see everything. Our growing media, a lot, so we're talking mainly about stem cuttings here. Our growing media, we tend to have our maybe multi-purpose compost or a John Innes number one. You don't want compost with a lot of nutrients in, so a multi-purpose peat free compost and then we're going to mix in with that either some sharp sand or grit sand this is grit sand or we're going to mix in some perlite which if you look at your soil notes there's a description of what perlite is so with a lot of stem cuttings we have a 50 50 mix of our peat free uh, compost and either 50% grit sand or 50% perlite because we need a really open compost because where the new roots are going to grow from our stem it's got we've got those meristematic cells dividing quickly so they need a lot of oxygen it needs to be really open the compost to let the oxygen in and also so that those new little baby roots which are quite delicate can get through that compost very easily so we have a really open mix for our compost or our growing medium we should say so those are our ingredients for that we need a clean sterile container we can get rot on that stem if there's lots of bacteria sorry fungi in there a clean container we need a flat surface on which to do our cutting so you could have a uh, an old tile or a plate something you can clean off and you need a very sharp flat bladed knife i won't even try and open that one um rather than secateurs you don't want to be pinching that stem you could sort of damage the vascular tissue this gives a nice clean cut against your flat surface that you can also clean so a, a flat flat knife and a, a cutting a clean cutting surface hormone rooting powder we need for a lot of our stem cuttings and my favorite watering can the horse watering can with a fine rose for watering afterwards and a white 
plastic bag just so it doesn't let too much light in and, and uh, heat up inside which we've sprayed to keep it damp here's my sprayer um, because inside here I've got all my cutting material and I went out at dawn now why did I go out at dawn to collect this well as you know from your science overnight those little stomata are closed aren't they so they're taking up water from the ground uh, and all the cells are going to get nice and plump overnight because there's no transpiration going on the minute that sun comes out the stomata open and they'll start to transpire so it's really important that you collect your cutting material at, at the beginning of the day when all those cells are turgid you're better collecting it then, spraying it to keep it humid and putting it in the fridge until 6pm and then doing your cuttings rather than leaving it all day, going out at 6pm or after a really hot sunny day, windy day today, um, collecting your material fresh and then doing it straight away. This material will be far better than material that's just been um, cut from the plant if it's been a long hot day um, so uh, a white plastic bag sprayed inside you put the cutting material in there at dawn I didn't really come out at dawn but you know that's what you should do um, so I think that is all our equipment just trying to think obviously we, we need our facilities where we're going to put our cuttings which we mentioned earlier so that's our equipment. Our three different types of stem cuttings are these three. Softwood, semi-ripe, which also includes our conifer, and hardwood, just those three types of stem cutting. And if you look at the syllabus, you will see, oh, where's my list gone? You will see that there are certain, um, plants that are given as named examples which I did have on uh, a sheet of paper which seems to have disappeared with my sticky notes how, an how annoying that is annoying I'm going to stop there I'm going to find it 